Hello students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know the essence of a qualitative inquiry, identify features of a qualitative research, understand the elements of qualitative research, and analyze the challenges faced by this research tradition, and also evaluate the future potential. Along the borders of psychology, qualitative research is steadily gaining momentum especially in the field of clinical and counseling psychology, social psychology, psychology of women and gender, developmental psychology, personality psychology and cultural psychology. The rather large qualitative umbrella shelters many traditions and ways of working which value creativity and innovation. Qualitative inquiry in psychology attempts to intervene three elements, namely embedding the study of psychology in rich context of history, society and culture. Second, resituating people whom we study in their life worlds and paying special attention to their social locations. Third, regarding those whom we study as reflexive meaning making and intentional actors. In the scientific community and predominantly in psychology and health, there has been an in progress active debate on the comparative advantages of taking up either quantitative or qualitative methods, particularly when researching into human behavior. To some extent, this debate played a crucial role in thinking about the science in the 1970s. Pickering in 1992 portrayed this movement as the sociology of scientific knowledge where the scientific understanding, developing scientific products and know-how became recognized as elements of wider engagement with society's environmental and social context. We shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place from the first time. This stated by T.S. Eloyd. Eloyd quote captures the quiet essentials of qualitative inquiry as a way of describing, understanding, unraveling, explaining and enumerating, documenting and chronicling social life. That includes attention to the everyday, mundane, ordinary and the extraordinary. Qualitative research involves the study of the self and the others and the complex relationship between, within and among people and groups, including our own personal entanglements. We are not at outside of our qualitative research projects, but located and shifting within them. Hence, qualitative research is an engaged manner of building understanding regarding the social world and human experience. This approach to inquiry is distinctive, partly due to its philosophical and methodological diversity in addition to the value systems guiding research practice. The diversity of the qualitative landscape and the gestalt of qualitative practice is to a certain extent attributable to the context which aided the development of qualitative research. Features of Qualitative Research Denzin and Lincoln listed five features of qualitative research in 2000. First, richness of description is a key concern. Qualitative research have a propensity to favor data collection methods that attain comprehensive evocative data that are often produced by use of meticulous field notes, focus groups and in in-depth interviews. In comparison, perhaps stereotypically quantitative researchers attain restricted and structured information from research participants. Second feature is individual's perspective must be captured. Qualitative method highlights the stance of the individual and gives space for expression of their individuality. Quantitative researchers tend to focus on comparison of people on some or the other abstract dimensions such as intelligence or personality. Third main key feature is rejection of positivism, 
utilization of postmodern perspective qualitative researchers tend to be to discard positivist approach that are based on a conventional view of what science is both quantitative and qualitative researchers rely on gathering empirical evidence that is an essential feature of positivism quantitative researchers hold the view that reality can be known regardless of the problems involved in knowing it for instance the researcher in the quantitative tradition uses language data as a direct representation of reality while qualitative researchers see language as a window in onto reality but not a complete representation of reality the post positivist viewpoint posits that a researcher's knowledge of reality can be only an approximate as there are multiple version of reality irrespective of whether there is truly a real world or not there is a key difference in the purpose of research for both these sets of research qualitative researchers disagree that the final product of research is generalizable knowledge irrespective of nature of data the fourth key feature is everyday life contexts and constraints are closely examined quantitative researchers tend to overlook attributes of everyday social world that has an important bearing on the experiences of the research participants while qualitative researchers are more firmly grounded in the social world fifth key feature is the social relationship between the researcher and the participant Researchers in the quantitative tradition tend to see themselves as an outsider and distant while qualitative researchers tend to see themselves as an insider and to a close quarters working with emerging theories and concepts is central to qualitative research while confirming theoretical notions and concepts central to quantitative research in essence Qualitative research must be grounded in an interpretative philosophical position that is it is concerned with how the social world is constructed comprehended known created or represented while diverse edition of qualitative research may appreciate or move towards these elements in dissimilar ways all will perceive at least a few of these as significant prerequisites in an intricate perhaps multi-layered and textured social world further qualitative research is based on methods of data generation that are flexible and sensitive to the social context in which data is produced instead of formally standardized or structured or totally abstracted from real life context using the method of analysis explanation and argument building it focuses on understanding of complexity detail and context such research intends to generate rounded and contextual understanding using rich nuanced and comprehensive data more emphasis is on holistic forms of analysis and explanation then on mapping surface patterns trends and correlations now the elements of research the main dimension of research can be categorized under three general categories first philosophical second paraxis and third ethics the philosophical substructure of research consists of three elements paradigm ontology epistemology At the level of praxis there are four key elements of research genre methods theory and methodology the ethical compass which combine philosophical and praxis dimension includes three main elements ethics values reflexivity by philosophical structure of qualitative research we refer to a range of beliefs which guide research practice these belief informs all aspect of research including how research should proceed and what can be known who can be a knower 
and how we come to know first substructure is paradigm which can be defined as a world view through which knowledge is filtered or an overarching perspective guiding the research process paradigms can be thought as sunglasses with different color lenses that influences everything you see often researchers working in qualitative psychology operate from different world view such as post positivist interpretivist critical making in a multi paradigmatic inquiry the second substructure of a philosophical interest is ontology that refers to the nature of social reality the pioneers guba and lincoln elucidated that the ontology question as what is the form and the nature of reality and therefore what is there that can be known about it in qualitative research truth is not absolute which is ready to be discovered and by objective researchers but it is contingent contextual and multiple subjectivity is acknowledged and valued and redefined sense of objectivity is achieved through ownership and disclosures of one's value system an outlook that ad- advocates knowledge building which is generative and process oriented is advocated the epistemological question who can be a knower is the third philosophical substru- substructure how research proceed as an embodied activity how one embodies the role of researcher and the relationship between the researcher and the research participants become the primary concern qualitative researchers operate from various distinct epistemological position researchers instead of being neutral recognize how their personal professional and political commitments affect the research and are considered as instruments research participants are valued and positioned as knowledge bearer and co-creators a hierarchical structure between the researcher and the research participants and the idea that the researcher is the sole authority is rejected qualitative researchers irrespective of their ontological and epistemological standpoints seeks to build partial contextualized truth through reflexive engagements with the research text or in collaboration with the research participants the next structure of qualitative research is praxis practice or doing of research researchers build on projects and execute them making adjustment as and when required in approaches methods and theories overarching categories for different ways of approaching research are referred to as genres each genre is equipped to study certain topics containing a range of commonly used methods of data collection analysis analysis and representation commonly used research genre comprise of interview field research art based research grounded theory community based research participatory research internet research unobtrusive re- approaches and multi method and mixed method approaches among others researchers choose his genre of preference due to a combination of factors like the research topic research question personal methodological preferences and experiences and the audience intended for the research in addition to a range of pragmatic concerns like funding time and previous experience skill and personal preference of research research methods or tools for data collection frequently used in qualitative practice include historical comparative methods document analysis in depth interviews oral history ethnography semi structured interviews auto ethnography audio visual methods narrative inquiry duo ethnography focus group interview content analysis poetic inquiry visual methods photo voice case study multiple case study discourse analysis conversation analysis 
daily diary research, program evaluation, ethnodrama, play building and fiction based research. These are selected as they are the best tools to collect the data required for a study depending on the research topic and framing of research questions and pragmatic issues such as access to pre-existing data sources or participants, time and practical skills researchers steer to particular methods. As discussed, each genre lend itself to the use of particular methods, for example, Genre of interview research is useful with methods of oral history, semi-structured interview, in-depth interview or focus group interview. Arts-based research genre lends itself to the use of audio-visual methods, photo-voice visual methods, poetic inquiry, ethnodrama, ethnocinema, ethnotheater, playbuilding or fiction-based research. In practice, these genre are more complicated. For instance, discourse analysis as a method may be employed in an interview study or narrative inquiry. Additionally, depending on situation in which one employs a method, say like narrative inquiry, might be viewed it as an interview approach, art-based approach, way of doing autoethnography or as a method of analysis. The field of qualitative research is a large diffuse field in which methods can be creatively employed and not necessarily in conventionally conceptualized ways. As the qualitative researchers draw on multiple theories, new conceptualizations and reworking of the methods is easily possible. An account of social reality grounded in empirical data but extended beyond the data is known as theory. Many theoretical perspectives may guide the research process like post-positivism, post-structuralism, symbolic interactionism, social constructionism, ethnomethodology, feminism, intersectionality theory, critical race theory, queer theory, among others. A qualitative study may also give face to the development of a new theory. In this case, Theory develops as a product of the research process inductively. The theory may be grounded in the empirical data from a study but extending beyond the data and open to application to another situations. Methodology is a plan for how research can proceed that is combining methods and theory. After combining of the different elements of the research, the actual ac execution of the researcher is methodology and is informed by the theory philosophical beliefs, ethics and corresponding belief system and selection of research method. It might be that of two studies for illustration use a focus group interview but the methodology of the researchers may be entirely dissimilar that is how they collect data but also on how they conceive of the use of that tool and thus structure the study. Of course the control and moderation exhibited by the researchers varies greatly in focus group. Methodology are not etched in stone. Methodology is often understood as flexible and malleable and open to variation across projects and even within the projects. A qualitative researcher may possibly alter her methodology to facilitate novel learning of fresh insights or to asymmetize to unforeseen obstacles, challenges or opportunities. Such malleability is strength of the qualitative approach to knowledge generation. Strategies for qualitative data analysis, interpretation, representation and dissemination of research findings also are diverse, making the methodological possibilities rich. The final structure underpinning qualitative research is ethics that bridges the philosophical and paraxis except of research. Ethics play a vital role in many research exercises. Classically, when working with human subjects, ethics refers to concern, preventing harm and exploitation to the people or setting involved in the study. Especially vulnerable population, disclosure of the type of study and use of finding, the voluntary nature of participation and confidentiality. In addition, qualitative researchers have ethical obligation to act sensitively and circumspectly judge how research participants are described. 
Further, ethical issues are also linked to a researcher's value system consisting of ontological, epistemological and practical consideration. For example, issues connected to the ethical practices are the real-world significance or public worth of research in inclusion of underrepresented populations, handling of atypical or conflicting data that way that the research findings are disseminated to pertinent stakeholders. Reflexivity, a key concept of in the qualitative circles, calls attention to how power and bias affect all the research phases. Reflexivity then is about the politics of positionality and acknowledging our power, privileges and biases throughout the research process. The social justice score and the critical and power sensitive theoretical standpoints of the qualitative traditions are drivers of reflexivity. Reflexivity, standing as a philosophical perspective is also a way of doing or acting from start to finish in research. Now we'll learn about challenges of qualitative research. Qualitative research is both stimulating and demanding. In recent years, it has been become the center of attention for some of the most intriguing debates, including the capability of research to ascertain truths or to represent the realities of others. Although these concerns have affected qualitative researchers for long, these debates have obtained a certain thirst from critique raised by postmodernism. For Denzin and Lincoln, the present state of qualitative research can be comprehended as follows. The field of qualitative research is defined by a series of tensions, contradictions and hesitations. This tension works back and forth between the broad, doubting, postmodern sensibility and the more certain, more traditional positivist and post-positivist and naturalistic conceptions. Other scholars in disagreement suggest that some expressions of postmodernism are paradoxically rather doctrine in their assertion, assertions. For instance, the social is constituted by the discourse of the subject and decentered identities rather than living and breathing embodied and feeling human beings. The consequences then become the sweeping away from one type of the law of generalization, for example, the modernist claim on generalization about whole culture with another where postmodern postmodernist claim about the ubiquity of disclosure and the impossibility of anything non-discursive. These ideas play a significant role for the practice of research as they provide us version of what exists, consequently how we can go about seeing it and influence our understanding of what is good or bad research. Postmodernists in critique have been somewhat accountable for forcing appreciation that traditional scientific mechanisms for evaluating quality of research are not fully sufficient, but there is also a peril that research driven by postmodernism principle position itself beyond judgment. These debates say between postmodernist, modernist, realistic or humanistic are enthralling and significant worth having but should not dominate or rather paralyze the practice of qualitative research. It is not hard to envisage a picture where qualitative researchers are busy pondering over questions about truth, representation and their own arrogance in suppose ever to comprehend or infer the experiences of other along with themselves. In the interim, researchers functioning from diverse operation may seem these debates as squabble of qualitative researchers than relevant academic disclosure. A major challenge for qualitative research is learning to continue to build to preserve its own repute in a style sensitive to these key issues without getting over involved in this self-defeating debate. Qualitative research often has had the fate of being undervalued despite having undertaken a difficult journey towards a new form of research. Some concerns that must be addressed in this endeavor are Qualitative research must be systematically and rigorously, rigorously conducted. There is no scope for casual or ad hoc approach to qualitative research. And difficult questions must be raised to make researchers think, plan and act in a methodological and meticulous manner. This should, however, be differentiated from an inflexible or planned approach 
which is generally not appropriate for qualitative research. It should be fallibistic, that is, accountable, for its quality and its claim. It must not attempt to position itself away from the judgment and should provide its audience with material upon which they can judge it. It should be strategically conducted, yet flexible and contextual. In essence, qualitative researchers should make decisions on the basis of not only a sound research strategy, but also with sensitivity to the changing context and situations of research. It should entail active reflexivity of critical research self-scrutiny by the researchers which refers to constantly taking stock of actions and the role in the research process. As a researcher cannot be neutral, objective or detached from the knowledge and evidence they are generating, they should seek to understand their role in that process. In fact, the very act of asking oneself difficult question is a part of the research process. It should generate explanation or arguments rather than just offering mere descriptions. Descriptions and exploration are never neutral or objective as they involve selective viewing and analysis. The essentials from a researcher's standpoint are based explicitly or implicitly on a certain form of explanatory logic and the way of seeing the social world. Qualitative researchers ought to see that they are producing arguments and are explicit about their logic. Qualitative research should produce arguments de demonstrating some wider resonance or are generalizable. Qualitative researchers ought not to be satisfied with producing idiosyncratic explanation, particular only to their studies restricted empirical parameters, as it underplays the competence of qualitative methods to facilitate cross-contextual generalities. Qualitative research should not be seen antithetical to quantitative research. The difference between qualitative and quantitative method is not totally def definite and researchers must be careful about how and why they might combine any of these methods. It should not be seen as a unified body of philosophy and practice. It ought to be conducted as a moral practice and with utmost regard to its political context. Summary. In conclusion, qualitative research can be understood as a rich and evolving practice with infinite potential for knowledge building and knowledge sharing with ample variety of approaches, tools and values. Researchers can, can construct, draw or assemble many different kinds of projects to study a virtually unlimited variety of topics. For this rationale, many consider qualitative research a craft or a form of dry college.